Good morning, church family. We welcome you to worship here today. We're so glad that you're here with us today. As we come to these moments, as we come to these moments of worship where we gather around and prepare to come and remember and celebrate the Lord's Supper today, I want you to hear the word of God this morning from Hebrews and let it guide our thinking this morning. Let's focus in on this scripture for just a moment. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full of assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more, as you see the day drawing near. Church, we have the privilege of being able to draw near to our God this morning through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, who has cleansed us all from our unrighteousness and opened that holy of holies. That's our hope this morning. Let's stand together as we worship and as we draw near to God, let's allow Christ to draw us close to one another, uniting through the Spirit as we encourage each other because of His amazing grace. Let's sing it together, church. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King of all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? Who leaves us breathless? This is amazing grace, this is unfailing love, that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you lay down your life, that I would be set free, Jesus I sing. chaos who brings our chaos back into order who makes the orphan a son and daughter the king of glory the king above all kings who rules who rules the nations with holy thunder shines like the sun in all of its brilliance the king of glory i don't know what's going on but we can worship anyway keep singing here we go this is amazing grace this is unfailing love this it would take my place that you would bear my cross I sing for all that you've done for me. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. One more time. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is your name. This is amazing grace. 
this is unfailing love, that you would take my place, that you would bear I sing for all that you've done for me. Amen. Bless the Lord, we made it. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It's His amazing grace. Precious Lord, reveal your heart to me. Father, hold me, hold me. The universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy. You are holy, holy. Thank you, great singing. You may be seated. Well, good morning, church family. I want to welcome you uh, this morning to First Baptist Church, Quitman. Welcome to the 509 family. I'm so, so excited you decided to come and worship with us this morning. If you are uh, here for the very first time, uh, again, I want to welcome you. Uh, but on the pew right there in front of you, on the back of the pew in front of you, there is a little connection card. Um, if you wouldn't mind filling that out just so we can get a little bit of information uh, from you and just to make sure we stay connected with you and help you uh, stay up to date on all of the uh, amazing things that we have going on here at First Baptist Quitman. Um, and we'll be uh, just excited, excited to connect with you there. Uh, if you would please flip over to the back of your bulletin. 
Uh, this is uh, really the best place on Sunday morning to find all of the things that we have uh, going on here at First Baptist. Um, today we have the awesome, awesome opportunity at the end of our service to, uh, to partake in communion together. Um, and that's just going to be a beautiful time that we can stand in unity uh, together. And then also this evening uh, at 530, we have all of our normal activities going on. But then at 630, we're going to all come back in here um, for our um, for our quarterly church conference. Um, that is just a time where our leaders have the opportunity to get up and just share what's going on in their ministry, what God has done, and what we're expecting God to do. Um, so if you uh, would like to know more about a ministry, this is a great place to do it. Um, or if you'd like to learn how you can serve or get plugged in, this is also a great place for you to come and join in um, tonight at 6.30. Um, and then next Sunday evening, we will not have any regular services here in the building. Uh, we're going to be out at the Ponderosa. Uh, for those of you that don't know where that is, that's off of Devane Road, um, out out towards Valdosta, and we're going to be having our summer splash uh, back to school bash that afternoon from 3.30 to 6.30. Uh, there's going to be food, there's going to be some fun, there's going to be some water games, fishing. If you can think of it water-wise, I think we're going to have it out there. Um, bring your swimsuits, come and just spend the afternoon and join some fellowship with one another as we kind of close out the summer and get ready to dive uh, back into the school year. No pun intended. Uh, but uh, it's going to be an awesome, awesome time for us to be uh, together there. And then God is doing so many other things. And just know that we are praying for you. If there's any way that we can be there for you, help you, please don't hesitate to let um, our church staff know we want to serve you in the best way that we can. Uh, in continuing in worship, if you would join with me as we pray, we're going to see where God takes us the rest of our morning. Let's pray, guys. Father God, we love you. And God, I thank you that you are in charge of all things. God, I ask you to forgive us of our sin this morning. God, where we miss it, where we fail, where, um, God, where our heart just doesn't line up with yours, Lord. And so I just pray, God, that you would help us there this morning, God, that, that through worship, God, that our heart would be, would be drawn to you, God. Bless Pastor Andy and our worship team and our choir, God, as they do that, as they work so diligently throughout the week, God, to, to help prepare themselves, to pre help prepare our hearts, uh, God, as we worship you this morning. God, for all of these events and things that we have going on, God, you're in control of them. Um, God, we just seek to follow you wherever it is that you lead us to go. And God, I thank you for each person here in this place today, God, that they would be, be challenged, that they would be encouraged, God, in whatever way that they need to be, God. Would you reach them and meet them at their greatest point of need this morning? And God, as we move towards it, God, just pray that you bless Pastor Steve as you fill him with your Holy Spirit, God, that it would overflow onto us as he's prepared this week, uh, God, to share, uh, share what he has pulled out of your word this week. And, and Lord, I just thank you so, so much for all that you're doing in us and through us. Thank you for the blessing of our building and our church so we get to come here and fellowship with one another, God. I pray that today, that everything we do, everything we say, the attitudes of our heart, God, the thoughts of our mind, God, would be glorifying to you. And Lord Jesus, we love you and we thank you and we praise you so much. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And amen. Thank you, Nick. The poet William Cooper wrote many, many hymns. And he suffered throughout his life with mental illness. Today, if he were part of us today, he would probably have been diagnosed as bipolar. But back then, they didn't know what it was. They just called it melancholy. He was melancholy at times. And I believe God used those dark hours as he sought his Savior to write some of the greatest hymns that the church still sings. And this one today. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sinners plunged beneath the flood lose all their guilty stains. That's you and me. That's you and me, church. Let's stand together as we continue in worship, singing about that fountain of blood that cleanses our sin. There is a fountain. Lose all their guilty stains. 
shall never lose its power till all the ransom church of God be saved to sin no more be saved to sin no more be saved to sin no more till all the ransom Church of God, be saved to sin no more. Casey, will you pull up verse 2 real quick? This one just struck me. Verse 2 about the dying thief. Where does the thief, I saw this the other day, Alistair Begg. I don't want to take credit for this. Where does the dying thief fit in your theology? He didn't have time to walk an aisle. He didn't have time to go be baptized. And as Alistair Begg, the preacher, said, can you imagine the scene in heaven when he got there and the angels were saying, why should we let you in? He said, he said what are you doing here? I, I don't know. And they said, well, did you do this or this? He said, I don't know. All I know is the man on the middle cross said I could come Amen. now I'm not telling you to wait till the end because you might not have a chance but here today as we remember and celebrate this Lord's Supper if you're here today and you're that dying thief and I'm not saying they were all thieves but we're all just as guilty the sin we had we deserve the punishment as he told his friend we deserve what we've gotten. He's done nothing. If you're here today, the man on the middle cross says, you can come. In fact, I just think we need to sing that. Is that all right, Casey? Can you pull that one up for me? Great. Thank you, buddy. Let's just sing that. The dying thief rejoice that fountain in his day and there may I go vile as he thank the Lord wash all my sins away would you do that today wash all God he became sin who knew no sin as we reflect particularly on this second stanza use it to prepare your heart and mind to come to the Lord's table to come in a manner worthy of the cup and the bread the body and the blood that we partake he became sin who knew no sin that we might become his righteousness 
He humbled himself and he carried the cross. Love so amazing. Love so amazing. Jesus Messiah. Praise his name. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that in these moments we come. Lord, we come not of our own worth, not of anything that we have done, nothing we could ever do. The righteousness that we think is so, the great things that we could do are nothing but filthy rags. And Lord, we come by your grace and your mercy. And we come looking toward Calvary for your forgiveness. Lord, as Pastor Steve comes in a moment around your word, would you bless him today? Would his words be your words and lead us to those moments as we celebrate and remember your work on Calvary, as we remember and celebrate your body and your blood, broken and shed for us, poured out for all our sins. Lord, we love you today. Cleanse us from our sin. Make us clean vessels for your use. Draw us closer to you and closer to each other as we worship today. 
And we'll be careful to give you the praise and the glory for it all in Jesus' name. And all God's people say together, amen and amen. Thank you and you may. And hopefully you can hear me. Good morning, church family. So glad you're here and just blessed. I just sort of got a lost in worship this morning and, and truly blessed. Andy, I think you could have preached this morning. You're pretty much on fire this morning. Well, what a blessing to be here in the house of the Lord. I have been gone all week. As many of you know, um, got to spend a vacation time. And I was in one building with... Um, children, grandchildren, and in-laws, and it was one of the most peaceful weeks I've ever had in my life. You tell me God still isn't in the miracle business right there. <laughs> what did you say in that song? In that first song, it says, who brings our chaos back into order? I can tell you from this week, God does. And what a blessing to, to have a relaxing week with the family. Truly enjoyed that, was blessed. Um, to be with Bon and Linda Holloway this week and just had a, a tremendous time. But God is good. And I come this morning just on fire to share what God has had on my heart. We're doing this series, the Do What series. It's, it's all those times in the Bible 
where God says something to someone or a group, and you know that someone had to be thinking, do what? That's just, we, we've looked at where he said, you're going to die, or you're going to do this, or you're going to do that. I want you to go through and do these things. You know that somebody had to say, do what? Well, this is one of those moments today, and we're going to be looking at John 6, 55 through 58. And if you will, in honor of reading God's word, let's stand one more time, so that if you can, so that we can honor the reading of God's word and our focus scripture from John 6, 53 through 58. So Jesus said to them, truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life in yourselves. The one who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up on the last day because my flesh is true food and my body is true drink. The one who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. It is not like the manna your ancestors ate, and they died. The one who eats this bread will live forever. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, God, we thank you so much for your word. And Lord, we just pray that this day glorifies you, that you prepare our hearts now to receive this word and apply it to our lives. Thank you for every blessing. I pray, Lord, that you forgive me of my sins and my shortcomings. I thank you so much for every single blessing. And in this moment, Lord, will you use me to speak your words and your truths to all those that will hear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Now, if you dwelled on this passage for a minute and you hear what Jesus just told them, you know that somebody had to say, do what? I mean, that's just eat my flesh. These people that he was speaking to You know this had to shock them. These are the same people that had denied themselves bacon their entire life, and now he wants them to eat on their flesh. You know, so it had to be a shock to them. But, you know, we often use things, and Jesus used things to get someone's attention. You know, we, we say words and statements that draw people in. And so Jesus, as he said this, He was drawing them in. And and sometimes when you talk things that you understand, other people don't understand them. I mean, today you sang a song. I didn't know you were going to sing that song, but there's a fountain filled with blood. Don't you want to just be dunked in that, right? As my wife said, when she was a little child, the first time that she ever heard, are you washed in the blood of the lamb? The church was quiet, and she said, yuck, right? (laughs) Right? I mean, you think about it. It's, it's those things that we might not quite grasp. We take it literally, and we're like, that's disgusting. You know, I mean, you think about it. It's one of those things. And so Jesus is speaking into these people, and you got to, we'll, we'll dive into that do what moment of what he is saying to the people. But let's first look at what precedes the do what statements. So, When we look at this, if you just keep your Bible open to John chapter 6, we'll sort of start from it. First, you had the feeding of the 5,000 in John 6, 1 through 11. The Lord took some bread and a couple of fish, and he fed over 5,000 men and most likely their families with them. So thousands upon thousands of people. He fed and he broke this bread. And so... That snapped in the thought process of a lot of them like manna from heaven. See, they had heard the stories of their ancestors walking through the desert and every day being supplied with manna from heaven, basically like bread on the ground, every day. And so this sparked something in him. He fed them. That physical feeding, you like that, don't you? I do. I ate at every restaurant I possibly could this week. Vacation means no diet, right? 
I ate everything I possibly could. We had ice cream probably four times this week. You know, and, and what a, you know, you just go, feeding gets our attention. Feeding got their attention. Next, Jesus walks on the water. And that's significant, even though they didn't see it, they knew the disciples left. They knew the disciples left in the boat, and Jesus went on a mountain to pray. When they got up, Jesus wasn't there. Where did Jesus go? So it's significant that he walked out to the water, got in the boat, and as soon as he got in the boat, what happened? They were immediately on the other shore. And so when they woke up, they did this, the next step, the search for Jesus. In John um, 2 through 25, is they started searching for Jesus. Where is he? They woke up, he was gone, and so they started looking for them. Many got in their boats and went to the other side because they knew the disciples had gone that way. And so they go over there. And lastly, the truth comes out is in the crowd wants, and I've got there, man manna. Got, the crowd wants man manna, meaning they want food. They want something for their, their wants. Not their needs, but they want something for their wants. How many of you would like somebody to prepare your meals for the rest of your life? Don't lie. You know? And somebody's saying, yeah, I already got that. No, no, you don't. You, you pay for that. But it would be really, really nice. You know, have, have those meals prepared for you all the time, right? So the crowd wants that. They want they want something physical. And we're going to be talking about difference of physical and spiritual all day today. All, all this sermon is going to be touching on physical and spiritual. In John 6, 2, it, it says, A huge crowd was following him because they saw signs and he was performing by healing the sick. Man, that's a physical thing. That's, that's something they saw. They saw healings. And there's many people that come to God for healing. But even in that, when you're seeking God for healing, that's not a spiritual healing. That's a physical healing. If something goes wrong, if some, something goes, you're sick, you have cancer, you have a massive illness in your family, and you ask God to heal that, it's a beautiful thing that you trust in God with your physical health, but, but it's still a physical thing. We're looking for that physical healing for a child, for for ourselves, for a wife. You're asking for a physical healing. And that's what the crowd wanted. They were were lured in by the physical healings and the signs that he was performing. And that's where you were. In John 6, 34, they even said, then they said, sir, Give us this bread always. When he started talking about physical bread, when he said that he would give them bread to eat that they didn't know, they automatically thought of what they had just been fed. They watched a couple loaves, five loaves, two fish turn into enough to feed everyone. And that's exactly what they wanted. And a lot of us, we want a peaceful life. We want physical things. We desire them and we talk to God about them. And it's not that that's wrong, but it can't be the only thing. And we're going to get to that in in a few minutes. But that's where they were. That was the only thing for them. They wanted physical healings so they could live forever. And they wanted him to to be able to feed them always. For the rest of their lives, he wanted them, they wanted him to feed them. He wanted them to heal them. And they wanted him, if you look in there and closely in chapter 6, they wanted to make him king. And Jesus got out of their sight because he did not want to be, this was not the physical presence that God was fulfilling. It was the spiritual need. So let's look at do what? In John 6, 35, this was before our focus verse, he told them, I am the bread of the life. I'm the bread of life, Jesus told them. No one comes to me will ever be hungry. No one who believes in me will ever be thirsty again. Man, that's immediately they're like, whew, do what now? If you, 
if, if you're the bread of life, how, how do you do that? How does that work? Are you saying that you're going to break more loaves, that you're going to spread out more fish? Is that what you mean? So that's what led him into the 53 through 58 verses. He clarified it for them. And so that's when he said, truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life in yourselves. Jesus was talking spiritual. But they were thinking physical. And we do that. You, you think, you know, we look at that and we look at, at it from a knowledge of Jesus Christ. A lot of you have studied the Bible for many years. You can't grasp how they must have looked at it. These people who have had regulations on their life ever since birth. They've had people telling them what they can eat, what they can't eat. And here this man is saying, I'm the bread of life. They saw him break this bread, so they said, that sounds good. They saw him heal people. That sounds good. He's the Messiah. He's got to be the one. So we're going to make him physical king. But that wasn't what was on Jesus' mind. Jesus was talking about spiritual manna, not physical manna. You literally are not going to eat God's flesh. You are literally not going to drink God's blood, not physically. There is not transubstantiation. All these nice little packets since COVID that you have where you can get the wafer out of the top, that'd be pretty bad if some manufacturer could make some money off of Jesus' body and blood right here, sell them in the convenient little package, and that's what it is. And then when you open the package... It becomes the body and blood of Christ. That's what not God is saying in this scripture. And so it's important that we understand that. So let's look at the difference and the focus in um, what the difference is between Old Testament manna versus New Testament manna. The Old Testament manna, it met the physical conditions or need to sustain to get a fit to a physical place. That's what, that's what the manna did. They were in the desert, and they did have livestock with them, but they couldn't stop every time and prepare. And so this was something that was there for them every single day, and it kept their health up, and their clothes did not wear out, and God provided for them physically to get to the promised land, the land that he had promised them, and physically. Now, Jesus has been also sent from heaven. And he's, he is the spiritual manna that come down from heaven that if you accept him spiritually into your life, he will provide your needs so that you can be cleansed and go into the eternal promised land. The physical manna would not get you to heaven. When they got to the physical promised land, the manna stopped. But Jesus will be with us in heaven. He is eternal and will be with us forever. And so when it comes to the spiritual manna and the physical manna, there was a dependence. There was a physical need met by those in the desert, met by God for those in the desert that were in need to get them to the physical promised land. And Jesus meets our spiritual needs for us to get to the promised land. And the dependency on that should be daily, just like it was provided for them in the desert. So it's all about, looking next, it's all about the spiritual. Everything is about the spiritual. I believe the manna in the desert was just something pre, pre-done for God, by God, so that we would recognize it in Christ and spirit, the spiritual reference to it in Christ. In John 3, 5, it said, Jesus answered, I truly, I tell you, unless someone is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That is Jesus talking to Nicodemus, one of the spiritual leaders of that time. And he's saying, it's all about the spiritual it's great to be born as a child and to receive the physical things of this world. But unless 
you are reborn, unless you are spiritually born again, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You will not enter. You, you are dead in your physical presence if you never accept the spiritual. In John 6, 63, it said this, Jesus says, The Spirit is the one who gives life. The flesh doesn't help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and are life. See, he's trying to tell these people that your spiritual needs are more important than your physical needs. And that was hard for them to understand. And you know what? It's still hard for us to understand. Because we're all about the now. We're all about this life. We want to be successful. We want to be well fed. We want to be well taken care of. How many of you would like no drama in your household? Amen, right? We would all love it. But it's still about the physical. It's still about we're focused on the physical needs of our, our lives. But God is focused on something much bigger. And he's saying unless you receive this spiritually, you haven't been changed. In John 6, 66, you're going to see the division between the physical and the spiritual. It says, from that moment, many of his disciples turned back and no longer accompanied him. You see, when he started talking about eating of his flesh and drinking of his blood, that they had to be reborn spiritually. They're like, okay, I want my needs met. I don't want all this stuff you're talking about. I want my needs met. And in this day and time, I can't tell you how many people I've seen that when their needs aren't met, when something negative happens in their life, they do the exact same thing. They turn and walk away from God. We all do it. Boy, when we've had a bad day, we don't even want to talk to God. We're mad at God because of this or that. We have our, we flare up at, at God because things aren't going according to our physical wants. It happens all the time. And there's days where we can get melancholy. There's days we can get sad. I understand when things, bad things happen, we're going to be hit hard. But your first thought process, if you're spiritual, is I've got to give this to God. In John 6, it's interesting, and I wanted to point it out, no reference to it, but it's interesting that it says, in that verse where it says, from that moment, many of the disciples turned back and no longer accompanied him. It's interesting that that's John chapter 6. Verse 66. I don't know. It's just very interesting to me that that's the chapter and the verse. But in John 6, 68 through 69, this is the difference between physical and spiritual. Simon Peter answered. Jesus asked them, were they going to turn away too? And he, Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom will we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Do you see... That when things get bad, when things get rough, when the physical wants aren't met, those that still say, I know I don't like it, I'm not happy, I, I'm, I've got some frustrations here, God, but you are the words of life, eternal life, and I'm going to turn to you. Because to me, it's all about the spiritual I've got to turn to God first. God has got to be my priority. He's got to be my first thought when things go wrong. I love it so often when something happens in one of your lives, one of the first phone calls you make is to me so that I can pray for you. I praise God for that. You know why? Because spiritual is on your mind. If you're like Andy, you call me to take you when you're having a heart attack. <laughs> Amen. You know, um, call the ambulance first. <laughs> Just do me a favor. But the truth is, is we do have to depend on the spiritual. 
So let's do a spiritual check every day. Every one of you need to do a spiritual check to see. You know, we're about to take in this Lord's Supper. It's a piece of wafer that represents the body of Christ that was broken for you. It represents, that juice represents the blood of Christ that was poured out for you, for your forgiveness of sins. And so before we take it, we need to do a spiritual check. Have we come to Christ for, to meet physical needs? That's okay if you did. But at some point, you had to recheck it and to give your life to Christ, your spirit to Christ. So this is a way to check your spiritual check. Well, do a spiritual check. Are you convicted of sin? Does sin bother you or do you come numb to it? If you can be numb to Christ, if you can be numb to sin, then the Holy Spirit is not in you offended by it. See, if you have the Holy Spirit in you, he's going to be offended by sin. Is God first in your time, in your finances, in your priorities? Is God first? Do you pray? Do you read his word? Here's a big one. Does he control your actions, your mouth, your temper, and your desires? You see, when the Holy Spirit is in us and we have made the spiritual taking of the flesh of Christ and the blood of Christ, not only is he going to be offended by sin, he's going to be in control of our lives. Before we come to the table together, you need to check yourself. Have you completely surrendered to him? Have you been obedient to his commands? When you accepted him as your Lord and Savior, did you say, God, I want everybody to know I want to get dunked in a booth. I don't want to get dunked in a creek. I want to be dunked somewhere so that somebody can see that I'm your child, that my spirit has been changed. It's now your spirit. Your blood flows through me. Your flesh covers me. You may today have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Before we take of the Lord's Supper, walk down and make that commitment. If you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, but you hadn't been obedient in baptism, that's the next step. Come down and ask to be baptized. And maybe God is, is urging you to become a member here, that you've, you've accepted Christ. You're, you've given your life to Christ. You've completely desire to, you've um, been baptized, but you desire your heart, Lord is pushing you to be a member here and to join with us in what God is doing here. Do it today before we take the Lord's Supper. And then we take it as one family, one unit, ready to serve this community and serve God with everything that we are. And maybe you just hadn't been filled with the Spirit lately. You've, you've become numb. Your walk isn't what it once was. There's always an altar open to get right with whatever you want to talk to God about. Maybe you've had a loss. Maybe you're hurting. Maybe you're worried about a child, a friend, a relative. Get it right. And then let's go to the table together. Let us go to the Lord together in prayer. Precious Heavenly Father God, I just thank you so much for every blessing. I thank you for all that you do. I thank you for the week that I've had, Lord, the, your spirit being constantly present and, and Lord, in guiding me in everything I've done. It's just been such a blessing. Lord, I, I don't want every physical need met. I know, Lord, that I have to have some things that I am constantly looking to you for and a dependence on you and that's what I wish for everyone is that we're so spiritually dependent on you that Lord those other things seem to just fall in place God I thank you for it that in my life I have watched blessing after blessing that when I finally said my spirit is yours Lord let our spirits blend and connect with one another 
God, that's when I really, truly saw the blessing. You were there for me in every step of my way. And Lord, whether it's through suffering or through, Lord, just an amazing time fishing on a boat. God, whatever it is, you're there in my life. I pray for each person here. That whether they're suffering this morning or this has been a great week of theirs, Lord, they make it right by completely surrendering to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. Let's stand together as we sing. I hear the Savior say, Jesus paid it all. Let's sing together. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He he washed it white as snow. Lord, now in thee I find thy power and thine alone can change the leper spots and melt the heart of stone. Jesus made it all. stain he washed it white as snow if you will please be seated and if you haven't wasn't able to grab one of these please if you would like to take share in the Lord's Supper with us just raise your hand and one of the ushers will bring you the um, cup if you need it so I've got a couple here that if you can get that too and the rest of you can be tearing these wonderful little things open. I hope you have better look at them than I do. Massey, one up here as well. Does anyone else miss? First part of twenty two. 19, the first thing he did was Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And then he gave thanks. Precious Heavenly Father God, Lord, we thank you for the bread and the juice that we're about to partake in. I pray, God, that you will bless over it. Lord, that it will represent each person here truly giving their spirit to you. God, that your blood and your flesh will cover us and purify us of all unrighteousness. That we will surrender to you everything of our lives. We thank you for what you've done for this precious sacrifice for us all. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So he gave it to them and said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he also took the cup after supper and said, 
This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Precious Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we can't even comprehend the sacrifice that you have made for us. But we thank you for it and pray that we will walk out of these doors and act like we appreciate it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for coming. Hope you come back tonight at 530 and we have church conference at 630.